What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and I love sneakers. I mean, my entire job is buying, wearing, and reviewing sneakers. But I've always wanted to know what it takes to make one. And not just any sneaker, a top of the line, premium quality shoe, best of the best. So I teamed up with a Portuguese shoe company called We Are Underdogs, which was started by a man named Paulo. He has decades of experience in the shoemaking industry and even made a line of shoes for Cristiano Ronaldo. Me, on the other hand, I just have a degree in industrial design and the only experience I have with making a shoe was that promo Planters Peanuts sneaker. So I think it's fair to say that I have very little experience when it comes to actually making a shoe. I've spent the last few months designing a sneaker and sharing the entire process on social media. I ended up landing on two concepts, and you all voted on which shoe you actually wanted to get made. Then, last weekend, I jumped on a plane from Philadelphia to Portugal, and I met up with Paulo. And of course, because I flew in on the weekend, I had to sample a little bit of what Portugal had to offer. So I'm headed to my first football game. I'm so excited. Victoria, let's go. First one. It's gonna be crazy. Then on Monday, we got to work. But here's the kicker. The first sample of the shoe was set to be debuted to the world on Wednesday night at a sneaker store in Porto, and we hadn't even started yet. Even though we were only making one sample pair, a sample of a brand new sneaker silhouette usually takes a couple weeks to a month to make. And not only that, the shoe factory that we were working with had just moved the day before, and none of their machines were working. So out of necessity, we decided to start working on the sole first. So right now we're here at Itaflex to check out all the incredible outsoles and how they're made and the cup soles, and um, I'm really excited to see it because my sole is actually being made here right now. So I just got to Itaflex and I'm checking out my brand new cup sole. I'm so excited to see it just in person. It's an incredible looking cup sole. It's made of EVA. And one of the best parts about it is that the EVA doesn't slip. That's something I didn't know because of the way that it's molded. It's molded with uh, some rubber compounds. The EVA apparently is inherently not very slippery, even though the, the traction pattern doesn't look like it would grip that well. If you actually put it up against something like a, a surface and try and push it, it doesn't move at all. So I'm very, very excited to, uh, to check this out. And also, also check this out. The other cup sole that we were looking at right here. Awesome, 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 awesome. So let's go check out the factory. Itaflex is a sole manufacturer that specializes in high quality and durable soles. They supply many well-known luxury, designer, and lifestyle brands that you've definitely heard of. It might seem obvious, but soles of different materials have to be manufactured differently. Rubber soles start out as raw rubber, and Itaflex adds ingredients to change performance qualities, durability, color, and more. Once the rubber is mixed, it's made into a sheet which is fed through rollers to work out the bubbles and imperfections. Then it's cut into thin rubber slices which will become individual soles. The rubber slices are then put on a scale and weighed against an existing sole to make sure that each sole that comes out in the same style is the exact same weight. Once the rubber slices are weighed, they're then placed on a steel mold, melted down and pressed into shape. The excess rubber is cut off the soles by hand, sanded down, and in some cases, painted. Oh wow, that looks amazing. I love the, the texture in there and the colors in there, that's amazing. We have more inside. Now, for the cup sole on my shoe, we're using EVA, which has to be poured into the mold and not pressed. Once the EVA soles are removed from the mold, a wooden form has to be placed inside them, which helps them hold their shape while they're cooling. 
Then, just like the rubber soles, they're finished by cutting off excess material with scissors and then sanded smooth by hand. After we finished checking out how soles are made at Itaflex, we took my cup sole over to the second factory to work on the sample. Okay, so we're at the next factory to check out the upper. And we're about to work on the, uh, the pattern for the upper. I'm really excited. So first, we're actually gonna tape the last and then draw on the shoe onto the last and then we can use that as sort of a basis to create the pattern. On the first day, we worked with one of the best pattern designers in the industry to take the tech pack that I had sent over a few weeks ago and turn it into a pattern that could be used to cut the leather. In order to do that, we had to grab a shoe last and cover it in tape so that the designer could draw my shoe design on the last, essentially making it 3D. We try to, to put your draw in mm -hmm. the last and in a good, good way. And, uh... Once he had finished drawing the design on the last, the tape was cut off and scanned into the computer. This allowed the designer to trace and make adjustments to the design digitally. And then grade to oh, wow. catch the proportions. The design intent has been respected in terms of the proportions, the lines, the uh, accentuations of the curves, or if there's something that needs to be changed here. Okay. The, the small details you had there, of mm -hmm. course, here it needs to be translated right to what the pattern will be right that i've been there i respect it so that's, that's awesome this is the overlay this is half of a leather okay, okay. all four and this is the other part one entire leather this is the top quality okay this zone this part it's the best best part of the leather when we comes for zones like this mm -hmm. it's more soft and not so consistent right and sometimes have more defaults you can see them if you it's it's not very perceptible but right. they are here some defaults okay in this part the leather it's top quality uh, and so this always goes on the toe in the front yeah. of the shoe because that's where you look. Yeah. It's crazy because I can't even see any difference between yeah, the two but, of them. But, but there's a lot. When we are cutting one model, mm -hmm. you can sh you can see here right. a small default. Mm -hmm. They don't put them in the shoes. Really? really? So do they have to, when they place the pattern, do they have to place it yeah. around that? Yeah. When I make the patterns, I mm -hmm. have to, to um, cut them to use almost of the leather. You can see like, like this. Is, is lo is looks like an elastic. Right. Okay? Right. Here, no. It's very static. So does this come from a different part of, of the animal? Yeah. It's okay. The, the um, central. Gotcha. This this is the stomach. Gotcha. That's why it's stretchier. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Stretchier. It's uh, thinner usually and has more defects and the belly part also and the backside, the butt of the cow also because they scratch it and they sit down and, and that's why the Paulo is saying that this is the best, best area. Best area. Right. Is so is this the natural texture of the leather too? Yeah. So things like tumble texture and stuff like that, that's all added. Yeah. Gotcha. That's something that I've, I've said in a lot of my videos is people don't seem to understand that that texture is added. So they think that whenever something's really tumbled, they think it's really high quality. But I mean, if you look at real leather, the tumble leather it's smooth, yeah. Really leather that was tumbled right lots and lots of have you seen the big barrels that the exactly. tanneries have i've i've seen them online yeah huge yeah. barrels with hundreds of, of skins tumbling hours after hours and that's they get that grainy look mm -hmm. and uh, that that softness also the elephant print that mm -hmm. nike uses for example that's, that's, here. that's embossed yeah, that's embossed. this is not natural this, oh wow this is embossed Oh, so that's just a big stamp. It's leather, yeah. yeah. It's leather too, but uh -huh. it's embossed. Wow. If it was really thumbled, the, right. the leather would be very, very, very soft. And, right. And this one you can hear it it's like paper. Right. So it's the morning of day two. We're headed to the factory to work on the sneaker. And unfortunately, we just had a flat tire. Racing against the clock, but we got this. Tire fixed. Good to go. So apparently the machine needed to actually cut the patterns is down. So what we're doing is cutting the patterns by hand. Usually the pattern is printed and then cut by machine. But like I said, the factory had just moved and the machines weren't working. So we had to cut the pattern by hand. So we just finished making the patterns and now we're actually gonna pick materials. We've got to find materials just in the huge pile of materials that they had that they haven't been able to organize yet. And that's another reason why the pattern machine was down because they haven't gotten like power fully up yet. And so, it's a challenge, man, but I'm excited. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, this one. Let's see what that is. 
for the natural suede, you wanted a, a, a little yellow? bit lighter to a little, a little too yellow. Yeah. yeah. Here's tumbled, but that's not, that's not the right oh, color. This that's is nice beautiful. though. Whoa, 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 whoa. It really is. This was. This could be like for the pantone of the. Instead of having it in uh, blue, it could be uh, like a light gray. No, no, no. I was thinking of instead of the white, Ooh. having this, this kind so of a soft. light gray. This is a new book. Tumble oh, new book. Oh my god. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is really nice. With natural lighting. <laughs> it is beautiful. Oh my god. That's awesome. Cool. We're gonna have the suede in the back. It helps to have the suede here. Uh -huh. But this pull look, if we are happy with it, it could work to have it in a veg tan. I do like that. I like the contrast between these two. If that was suede, now that would be cool. Could this be it? Natural suede. Oh, this is nice. Let's see the overall color. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Now we're looking for the blue. Yeah. Why don't we go rogue and just make it an old, all gold? Please don't. <laughs> No, I think it's too dark. I think it's a little dark. It could be a cool option though. Yeah. But I think it is a little bit dark. If you place like this, mm -hmm. it loses the grain. It loses the grain. So that's how and you know it's a natural tumble? They have again the grain. Oh, wow. This one here, it's not natural. No. So that one was pressed on? It's embossed. Yeah. Embossed. What? Okay, if instead of this, we use this, Gins or indigo blue, mm -hmm. imagining with a white capsule to see how it go. Let's look. I, I sort of like the semi gloss finish on it because it kind of changes up the, the texture. I wonder if we can find a color around this, but with this sort of finish, semi gloss maybe. And then that has a nice sort of texture contrast. You've got the smooth leather with the gray. For this version, with this as the blue, right? This is a kind of a more a brighter. Uh, so, and if we go for this as the contrast and suede, so the colors to make the shoe, it's this one. I okay. know it's lining, but uh, <laughs> it's cow. We won't tell anybody. It's cow, no, no, no. <coughs> it's not lining. It's a, it's like outer, you know, outer shoe material. Our standards are high, so for us this is like <laughs> that. So we have this as the suede. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah, this will be done. Color. That's yeah, nice. Day, that's really nice. I love that. You know, honestly, a suede on the sock liner too would be nice. Uh, pigskin. 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 Now you're talking. <laughs> Forget the fabric. In America, we call um, American footballs pigskins. Day that you're gonna go outside and toss the pigskin. So this is the pigskin for the liner. Oh, this yeah. is nice. Soft. Yeah. We will pad it, of course. Uh huh so that we have foam inside. Because I love you guys and we want to give you the best quality sneaker, we've decided to go with pigskin for the sock liner instead of mesh because we feel like that'd be much higher quality and it would just look nicer overall. So this is gonna be a premium shoe. This is gonna be some crazy high quality stuff, especially for like the $180, $200 price point. So I'm really excited for this. This is gonna be, it's gonna be dope. Foam for the padding of the uh, collar. Gotcha. So what we will have is the leather and inside the the foam right. with all the, the thickness that we have, I think it's eight mil, eight millimeters there. Okay. So it will be padded and with the fact that you want it uh, folded, stitch and turn. Perfect. This actually breathes better than mesh because it's real leather. It's natural. Whereas PU fake leather doesn't breathe. No. Because it's plastic, period. Once we finished picking out leathers and nubucks and suede, we began cutting the material into the different panels of the shoe with the patterns. Okay, so we've made an executive decision. We've decided the first 100 pairs that we're gonna do are gonna be all numbered. So if you grab one of the first 100 pairs, you're getting a numbered pair, which is crazy. I didn't realize we could do that. That's so sick. Right now we're picking logo placement for the uh, We Are Underdogs logo, and I think we're gonna put it on the uh, back panel of the shoe. Right, that's, that's the back panel. Are we thinking right there? Yep, we need to go to the uh, pattern maker uh, so that he makes a uh, mark. Now they're actually picking out the, uh, the stamp to Stamp or emboss the logo. Look at that. That looks great. That looks awesome. Oh, this strap. Oh, that looks great. That looks beautiful. That was the Even though we finished cutting the panels on the upper, they needed to be skived before they could be sewn together. 
Skiving is a process where the thickness of a leather panel is lessened around the edges so that it's easier to sew together. The way this is done is essentially just by sanding down the edges of the leather with a specialized machine. Once the leather is skived, backing needs to be pressed onto the areas that will have lace punch outs for added reinforcement. After all this is done, we can begin sewing the outer panels together. Now we're starting to stitch the shoe together, which is kind of when the shoe starts to get into shape, which is really exciting to see because now we're going to really see how it looks with all the colors together, all the stitching details. Something that you might not know is that excess thread at the end of each stitch is often burned off with a lighter. In order for the shoe to have padding around the ankle and the tongue, foam must actually be glued to the outer layer of the leather and the sock liner and then sandwiched between the two parts as they're sewn together. One of the signature details of my shoe is the hand-stitched X detail, and as you can see, it's actually hand-stitched. In order to be able to lace the shoe, lace holes have to be punched through the leather. We're on to the uh, final assembly where we're actually connecting the upper to the midsole with the last, so this is exciting. Once the upper is sewn together, temporary laces are tied to hold the front of the shoe in place while machines press it into shape. Then a last is put into the shoe and the upper is pulled around the last by machines and then pulled tight by hand. The edges of the leather on the bottom of the shoe are then hammered down. Next, the shoe is run through a machine that sets the glue on the upper. The leather edges on the bottom of the shoe are sanded down so that the upper can actually fit into the cup sole. Then, the upper is finally glued onto the cup sole. The glue is brushed onto both the bottom of the upper and the inside of the cup sole to ensure that the glue is covering all the necessary surfaces. The two parts are then put together and put through a bonding process which includes heating and flash freezing the shoe so that the glue sets properly. The last is then removed from the shoe and the excess glue marks around the seam are buffed out by hand. Finally, the cup sole is stitched to the upper through the EVA to ensure that the two pieces will never come apart. At this point, all that's left to do is tie the laces. taller. Five millimeters. I agree. Definitely. That's it. Down. Down. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Para mesmo até para captar aquela linha que eu mostrei no vídeo. Your the line that you have in your video that you it's have. more fluid. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So I think I think it's better to put the same idea in this line. Okay? That I agree completely. At, at yes. you, it will be much better with this kind of lines. I agree. One hundred percent. So I just got up, today is the day, it's Wednesday. Um, we're revealing the shoe tonight at Extreme in Porto, Portugal. Um, I'm like a little nervous, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what people are gonna think. 
Um, it's just like whenever you make something and you show it to people for the first time, it's, uh, it's a little nerve wracking. So we're doing the soft reveal tonight, only at Extreme, and then uh, we'll do the grand reveal in this video. So tonight is kind of like the culmination of all the work from this week, and um, I'm ready to see what people think. So we've made it to Extreme, and we're here to actually show off the brand new sample, right there. Super, I don't know if I was pointing at it or not, I wasn't looking at it, but super excited about it, and we're actually also signing souls to give out to people who come and say what's up, so super excited for this, should be a lot of fun. Yesterday, and then the video's gonna come out about the whole production and everything on Friday, and then it's gonna go, um, pre-order's gonna start Friday, and then we're gonna have a, a newer version with a slightly lower blue area, a slightly taller tongue. It's pretty close to what it's gonna be. And it'll come with white laces too. We've had a couple comments from people who don't like the orange laces as much, so they'll have both colors. Well, I think I like it. So this is the first sample, also known as the pullover. Of course, it's not perfect. Shoes usually go through many samples before they're finalized and even revealed, but we felt like this was very close to what we wanted. Some of the changes that we're gonna make for the second sample and of course the final pair are things like lowering this blue area here so that it more closely resembles the original sketch. I feel like it might be about five millimeters too high and I really wanna show off more of this gray nubuck. And you could actually almost see generally where we wanna lower it to with this little sort of indent right here. In addition to that, we wanna add about five millimeters to the tongue and also pad it a lot more so it's a little bit fatter. Of course, because this blue leather is a little bit thinner than most of the other materials on the shoe, we're actually gonna go back in and add some more backing to make it a little bit thicker and a little bit less easily creased. And then some of the more minor changes are things like tacking this pull tab to the top of the tongue so it doesn't flop forward, and also extending the length of the back pull tab. Oh, and of course, stamping my signature on the heel. And Paolo and I have officially decided to call this shoe the Origin. Not only is it the first real production shoe that I've ever made, but it also symbolizes where we are underdogs and I live. In the origin places of our countries, Guimarães, Portugal, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But here's the crazy part. You can actually pre-order this shoe right now. The Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origin retails for $199 and ships in mid-May. There's a link to pre-order your pair from weareunderdogs.com in the top of the description, and the first 100 pairs are numbered. What's crazy too was being able to see the whole process and just the unbelievable quality of materials and hand craftsmanship that went into this shoe. This is no outsourced, mass-produced shoe made with synthetic leather and questionable quality assurance. The Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origin is a handmade, locally sourced, luxury quality shoe made at the same factories as luxury brands. But it's being sold at a regular sneaker price, and it's inspired by you, the viewers who followed the entire process, voted on the sneaker that you wanted, and the colorway. I want to give a huge thank you to We Are Underdogs and Paolo for making this dream come true. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I can't thank them enough. And make sure to grab your pair of Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origins. I've left a link in the top of the description below. And if you want one of the 100 numbered pairs, make sure to pre-order now. Thank you all so much for the support that you've given me over the last couple years. Without you, this would not be possible. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.